that high B. Okay, awesome. Everyone can hear me, no problem. Excellent. So welcome to the free webinar of the Karmic Clinic. How is everyone feeling today? Yep, Sam's feeling great. And Christine's feeling great. Yep, all right, excellent. <clears throat> good to see everyone feeling good. I, I trust you're all excited for this webinar as much as I am. So let's get into it. Okay, so just some housekeeping, <clears throat> get rid of all distractions. Take notes, take notes in, a, in the notebook, have a glass of water handy, and recordings will be available within 24 hours. Okay, so this is, so this is what you will be learning in today's webinar. What karmic law is and how it affects you, why breaking karmic law has, has serious consequences and what will happen to you health-wise, financially, mentally, etc. if you don't deal with it. So in all areas of your life, leaving karma unchecked can lead to devastating consequences, horrific lockdowns, being forced to wear masks, getting microchip, financial hardship, and even death. How to stay within karmic law in the future and take the radical action steps necessary to release your karma so it doesn't happen to you again. That's what you'll be learning in this webinar today. Okay, so, so you will learn karmic law begin releasing your karma by our enhanced karmic release protocol and not only navigate these times but be more abundant than ever i'll be made and i'll be making an offer to start releasing your karma in record time so this will be at the end you will be asked to invest keep in mind and you will be stretched so this isn't for non-serious people this is a serious one <clears throat> And even if you don't get this offer, I trust that you will receive tremendous value in this webinar today. Okay, so now who this is for. So I'm gonna go through this and then you're gonna to type which one you feel is you. So one, you know you have, you have lots of past life karma affecting you. You're scared and feeling the panic of others around you. You sense that violating karmic law has a lot to do with what's going on for planet Earth. Two, you're successful in business, but you know this is serious. Very, very serious indeed. You know if you don't release karma fast, you could and will end up losing everything you have and have your finances seized as governments reset the financial system and new one comes in as imprints play out in the physical realm around you. Three, you're well on the way to releasing your karma, but you desire to accelerate your path and release it in record time to help humanity navigate this dark night of the soul. So now what, so now just type in the chat, which one is more, more is closer to who they are, to who you are. Yep, so Zen Den is two. Sam is three. So which one you do you feel is closer to who you are? So quite a few threes here already and a couple of two. B one, but heading to three. Awesome B. James, one to three. Interesting, James. So there's quite a few, so quite a lot of twos and threes here. Not many ones. So that's, so this is certainly interesting. All right, excellent. Okay, and uh, so everything is, energy and energy response. This is a quote by Master Raymond Grace, a great master who lives in Virginia. 
Um, he and what what he says here. Although I've heard this many times, I always think back to this and re and think about how true it is. Because simply, when you think about it, all karma is karmic imprints are twisted knots of energy. And if they are energy, how much more can we transform them? So truly, this quote certainly applies to karma. Karma can truly be transformed. Okay, so how does karma affect you? So the, the, there's many ways here. So this especially applies to now. Contact tracing, identity devices. So, tr so these, these kind of things and monitoring. COVID vaccines encouraged, coerced, and even made mandatory. Um, economic meltdowns everywhere. Forced microchipping. Food shortages. Riots, you see of all of this is happening in the world right now. Looted businesses with the Black Lives Matter movement and many others. So as you can as you can imagine and as you can see it, this is not the time to be in denial. This is not the time to bury your head in the sand and ignore what's going on. And all of this and the, all of this connects to your karmic imprints. So all of so all of this, what's going on on the planet and what's playing out, this all connects to your own karmic imprint and to the country's um, imprint. And generally, wherever people, wherever you are in the world, the country, um, you're there simply because due to your karmic connections, imprints, and your consciousness. Okay, so now just a bit about me and my story. I went to school until eighth grade, until I was 13. I was then homeschooled from ninth to 11th grade. I did busking in Fremantle markets using card magic, so I never needed to get a job. I've never had one. I was at three in business admin last year of schooling at TAFE. I've been on Today Tonight TV in 2017. And what now what I'm doing is helping people shift their problems and improve their lives. And I do that by teaching the spiritual and esoteric as well as clearing sessions. And I and also I used to be a rebellious child. I used to never I never listen to authority. I thought it was crap. I never and I would never listen to my parents, never never paid attention in school, never did any of that stuff because I didn't like it. And so, so that, so that's, that's just a little bit about me. So when, so I was on today, tonight at 15, working as a busker. So that's, so just to clarify that, that's how I got into today, tonight, working as a busker with my card magic and through business mentors I had at the time with it, where they were running this kid's business program. And I was one of the select few to make it on. Okay. So now, now we're going to get into karmic attachments. So what are they and what do I mean when I say karma? So the law of karma. Now, what is karma? Now, we've all heard this term, but what does it really mean? The Buddhists describe the law of karma like a wheel of incarnation. And Christians say what we sow is what we reap. Another way of saying it is every action has a consequence or cause and effect. There's many ways that you can label them. Economically interconnected and must play out precisely as it happens. We repeat our karmic lessons until we finally learn and shift the karma on what's going on. So basically, everything that's got that happens around us, what happens in our life, it's all karmically interconnected and plays out as it and plays out as it is. And unfortunately, we do repeat the same lessons we did in past lives over and over again. Until you finally learn the lesson, shift it, what's going on and break that cycle. The law of judgment applies and is ultimately stored in the Akashic records. So karma is a self-correcting system. We choose our mission in advance before we come into the planet. So we actually, so, so we all, so, at some point in our lives, we've all kind of thought, well, we didn't, I didn't choose to be born. I didn't choose to be here. But in reality, we actually did. We, we signed, we signed the pre-life agreement. 
whatever it was before we came here. We, and we create karmic imprints when we choose something not in line with the original design or with our life mission or soul purpose on the planet. We also create karmic imprints when we go against the higher law of life, liberty and property. There is, there is an order of creation and government which must be honoured. So there is there are real creations and real governments which must be honoured. And our kind is discovering. You cannot do what you can't just do what you want when you feel like it without any regard of consequences for others um, and the best interests of the planet. There are always consequences and it will always come back to bite you in one way or another. This is why karmic law was put in place to protect the planet and its citizens, give security and a peaceful and quiet life. And ultimately to keep it to keep everything in order. Because as we know, without a plan, without laws, without laws, just total chaos. Imagine what the planet would be like if everyone could do what they wanted. As we saw earlier on, karmic law is expressed in many ways and through many different religions. But there is a universal theme which we see across all the religions and teachings. So, so Yogananda had quite a lot to say about karma. So he said, the habits you cultivated in past lives have substantially created your physical, your mental and emotional makeup this lifetime. So whenever you are reborn, that karma consisting of all your past thoughts and actions and habits creates the kind of physical form you will have, not only your appearance, but your personality traits. And that one, that one very much interested me when I saw that one. The universal law of karma is that of action and reaction, cause and effect, sowing and reaping. In the course of natural righteousness, man, by his thoughts and actions, becomes the arbiter of his destiny. So really, what Yogananda is saying is that your physical, mental and emotional makeup is in, in this life is a result of your karma from your past life. And the physical and, and your physical form right now is a result of the karma too. So, so height, looks, weight, um, everything around that. Um, and and he also said, and he also said about that it's action, reaction, cause and effect, so raping, all these different ways that you can put it, and and that by our, our thoughts and our actions are ultimately what shape our destiny. So that's Yogananda, and Sri Yuketswa had also, also had something interesting to say on it too. This was when he was teaching Yogananda after his ascension. Beings with unredeemed earthly karma are not permitted after astral death to go to the high causal sphere of Kages, but must shuttle to and fro from the physical and astral worlds. So what he's saying here is when we have unredeemed earthly karma, we are bound by it. We are bound by our own karma. And that when we die, we don't, we don't, that's not the end. Base, what happens then is we must, unfortunately, reincarnate and shuffle from, from this physical world over and over again. And only until we clear out every, all our karma can we truly ascend, actually go to the higher causal sphere of cosmic ideas. So just type a Y in the text chat if this is really eye-opening, all of this already. Sheldon, Y. Sam, yes. Yeah. So a couple of you, excellent. And Buddha, Buddha had, had some to say too. So Buddha said, how people treat you is their own karma. How you react is yours. Now that one, that one, that one really fascinated me because, because I mean, this one, it could be easy to kind of misinterpret it, but really the way I see it here is that 
the way people when people the way people treat you is their own karma, and how you react and how you handle it is your own is then you create karma out of that. And Warren says that is a really good quote, Buddha. Yes, I agree, Warren. This is an excellent quote. Um, there's many different ways of reacting. So if someone's being horrible and nasty to you, if you kind of if you kind of blow up and attack and all, and get and get angry and defensive and all, what that can create karma too. Okay, Warren is saying my internet is cutting in and out. Is everyone else having that problem? I just need to know just in case I might need just in case I might need to move a room. Sheldon, no. Kathy, no. Helen, yes. Sam has been a bit. Alan, yes, me too. Okay, quite a few of you then. So I might. So what I'll do quickly is I'll I'll try I'll try and move rooms and see if it's better. So so just for a moment I'll just turn off my camera and I'll just move rooms and see if it will improve it. And yes, because quite a few of you seem to be having that issue. All right, so I've moved to a different room. Now I'll just get a chair and see if this works better. All right, so is this any better, everyone? Warren, so far, so good. I'll turn on my camera again. Sheldon says yes, and Helen clear, Steve seems stronger. All right, excellent. Great, so we can continue. All right, so as I was saying before, how people treat you is their karma. How you react is yours. So how you, how you react to someone treating you is how is the ultimately the karma and the consequences that you'll receive as well as them. So so that one is definitely a good one to think about. And the wheel of incarnation now. So the Buddhists call it the karmic cycle we experience on, on earth, the wheel of incarnation. They call the karmic cycle we experience the wheel of incarnation. They teach that our existence is a cycle of life, death, rebirth and suffering that we're here to break free from and escape altogether. The Holy Bible discusses the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments, which are the governing foundations of karmic law on the earth. These laws are used in our legal system and many secret societies, e.g. like Freemasonry. So, but, so, this, so this one is taught quite a lot. The Holy Bible really discusses it and the Ten Commandments and everything. And ultimately, these laws are used in our own legal system and in secret societies, even the Freemasons, the darker, the darker occults. So let's look closely at these. So the Ten Commandments. So the first one is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. So what this means is idolatry. That's when you're moving into separation. You're putting your attention, energy and focus and adoration on other gods or objects outside yourself. Living an illusion of separation about self, separating yourself from God or higher law. 
So that, so that one is a very dangerous one. And ultimately on this one, this happens, unfortunately, this is unfortunately happening rampantly on the planet right now with people kind of idolizing like celebrities and their athletes, their gyms, getting their hair done and going to the, going to pubs and going and going to just their different clubs and just other stuff. So they, they've got, they've got their own kind of God happening instead. And they're not, they're no longer living by the, the true divine and the true higher laws anymore. So thou shalt not take the name of God, of the of Lord thy God in vain. So what it's saying here is honor the sacred vibrations of the name of God and honor, honor his name. Don't disrespect or disregard it. Because if you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you respect the name of God with equal passion and vigor. The third one, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. To Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox, go to church on Sunday, treating it as the Lord's day instead of Saturday to honor the day Christ rose from the dead. So they know what's happening here. Because the New Testament actually says to not to be judged by the Sabbath, and we are in a permanent Sabbath or rest. So we always want to take um, a rest day. We don't want to be working constantly all the time. And the fourth one is honor thy father and mother. So you must show respect for your parents as children and adults. And children must obey their parents and adults must respect and see to the care of their parents when they become old and infirm. So this, so yep, yeah, this, so that, so that one is another important one. Honor thy father and thy mother. And I'm sure you see the point of it. The fifth one is thou shalt not murder. So there's a big difference between murder and killing. What murder is, murder or killing an innocent person or for your own personal gain is a sin. This includes energetic murder, i.e. hating your brother or sister with negative thoughts. So that's, so this is murder. So murder is not only limited to the physical where you shoot or stab somebody. It also is energetic as well. So if you, when you're projecting negative thoughts and negative energy towards someone, your murder, that also counts. Killing an unjust, killing an unjust aggressor or evil person in self-defense or kill of, your, of yourself or others is different. So when it's in, when it's in genuine self-defense, that's different and you won't create karma out of that one. And the sixth one, thou shalt not commit adultery. So illicit or secret sexual activity with somebody else's um, covenant partner, with somebody you're not aligned with in connection or unequally or unequally yoked in any way. So that's when, so that's when you're having sex with someone's partner or when you're cheating on your one. And because ultimately it's about heart and soul connection and not just lower chakra or pure physical connection only. It's not just limited to that. And this, and then the seventh one is thou shalt not steal. This forbids taking other people's property. So common law preserves life, liberty, and property. Is this includes embezzlement, cheating your employer, stealing from a government, vandalism. And so that one obviously goes without saying, like the like the adultery one and the and the murder and most and all of these. Thou shalt not commit false witness against thy neighbor. And your neighbor is not just the person who's, who lives across the street from you or is in your neighborhood. Your neighbor is anybody you're connected with. A love and having a duty of care to one another. And speak the truth at all times. Do not intentionally lie or intentionally deceive or swindle another for your own personal or private gain. So this, is not, this would be one big way to create karma for yourself as well. And the ninth one is thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. This forbids, this forbids intentional desire for unlawful sexuality. 
so Jesus talks about lusting after a woman or man in your heart with the desire and will to have immoral or non-consensual sex with them. Human sexuality is a sacred gift to cherish, especially partners of others. So this one is very important. And the tenth, what the, the tenth one, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. This forbids wanting to or taking somebody's property. This commandment condemns theft and the feelings of envy, greed, and jealousy in reaction to what other people have. So not so not so not having that envy, greed, and jealousy in your heart and not wanting to take it from them. So those are the ten commandments. So another way of looking at it is original karmic um, is original karmic law is a way to ensure humanity obeys higher laws due to our tendency to break them for our selfish ends and cause damage to the planet and others. And as you and as we're seeing in the world today and for for centuries, when this karmic law has not been followed, people do tend to break every single law, and that's why they're there in the first place. The common law and enhanced karmic law was introduced to give a humanity a way through higher technology, codings and teachings to release karma. That is to return to the law of love and principles of social responsibility. So the fulfilled law of karma. So Christ, Buddha, Krishna, the Kriya Yogis show all karmic law comes ultimately comes back to the following. Love the Lord God, your Lord God, with all your heart. So love and honor the universal laws and the high count councils and masters. Put these first. Study and make them your passion. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, and you shall be filled. And that's what they said. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law of life, liberty, and property. Value, value human life, liberty, and their property. Anything else is contract or statute law. So there are, there are actually three levels of karmic law to learn. The first one is universal higher laws of truth. And this is the most important. Universal and higher inviolable laws are in place for order and security. There are intergalactic councils, brotherhoods, and Elohim who govern the peace, security, and prosperity of planet Earth. The second one is your inner truth. And violating this will attract negative consequences. That's another one. Karmic truth. So this, is, this one is an interesting one. Your particular calling or pre-life agreement with the lords of karma and higher councils or your higher self does not permit something. So this is where it can get real interesting. Because with this karmic truth, your own calling or your pre-life agreement may not allow you to do something. So let's just say you, have, you feel strongly that your path is business and making a load of money. But then whenever you've, tr but when you've, whenever you've tried that out, it's never, it's never seemed to work and always fell apart. But however, when you did something different, like gone on a more spiritual path, then then you found that it worked from day one. So just type a Y in the text chat if you've experienced that karmic truth before. Sam, yes. B, yes. And Helen, James, yes. Babes, yes. All right, so quite a few people have. So though anyway, yep, those are the three levels of karmic law to follow. And hierarchy of authority. So there's there's actually a hierarchy. So the, the, the old, the top one is God, source, the higher consciousness or infinite intelligence. Then there's sovereign man, woman. Then there's government. And then there's persons. So the top one is God, the higher, the higher laws, the higher Elohim. The next one is sovereign man. So, so, that, so that's the sovereign people. Then the government. 
So this may, really, really, this means that the government actually, the government is actually supposed to be below the sovereign man, not above. And then the last one is persons or the slaves. So the people who choose to trust in the system and be a slave instead of trusting in God from above. But, on, but on the order, unfortunately, which is happening right now, is there's God source, then there's government, then there's sovereign man, and then there's persons. So unfortunately, the so unfortunately the got the people have a, have got the fear of the government and everything, and trust in the system rather than the higher God from above. So that's the hierarchy. So how do you release your karma? Must you work it out? So the law of karma. Now there are two ways to release your karma. The first one is work it out. You work out your karma by fully reaping the evil seeds of what you have of what you have sown. That is, actions equals consequences. Others literally do to you as you did to them. You know, you'll know what it feels like. And I would certainly not recommend that one. The second one is clear it out. You release your karma. You do this by listing and dealing with it really putting it onto the table and using codes and high level activations. This releases you from lifetimes of karmic consequences and enables you to avoid experiencing the full effects of your sin or karmic actions. This is a much easier way to go. And ultimately you can make things right in other ways. And so this one, this, so this is the one that you ultimately want to do. So how do we create karmic attachments? Uh, our life is shaped by many factors. Our past experiences in this lifetime, our parents' imprints and beliefs, our ancestral or past life imprints, impact of the mass mind of our region, country, impact of the mass mind of the earth. These create karma to be released. And we live, so we live by the law of cause and effect. All is connected, and we are connected to one another in all that we do. So, as you, so as you can see here, these are just many different examples. So, there's the past experiences in this life, our past lives, amongst many other things. So these, so we ultimately, these are very common ways that we create karmic attachments. And how is karma determined? They are determined by the Akashic records. These are the soul records of everything we've done in this lifetime and others. It has our records on this planet and every other planet. The Bible calls it the book of life. It says at the end of the present age, the books will be opened and read for judgment. The Bible also describes it as the ancient of days, the end of the current program. So these records, that, that these records have, have everything that we've done in past lives and our current life, and they, there's nothing missing. And so the books will be, will be opened and read for judgment. And I don't know about you guys, but that one is, that sounds very terrifying to me. That's for sure. We carry our karma across multiple lifetimes. This is why we get past life recollections to integrate our past lives into this lifetime and learn our lessons to not repeat the mistake. So unfortunately, we not only have karma from this life to clear, but also from our own past lives and from our own parents and from our ancestors. So the, think of it like karmic loop, uh, think of karmic loops like a virus in your system. So they're like a virus or malware in your system. With a virus or malware, it creates problems. The computer does things it's not supposed to. However, until you clear the virus or Trojan or malware, you can scream, curse and shout, but it won't change anything. The computer continues into malfunction. It's the same with karmic imprints. And unless you're clearing your imprints, every act and choice you've made in this lifetime and other lifetimes and the choices of your parents and ancestors affects you right now, today. 
So you, in order to stop these karmic loops, you have to clear it and shift it out and be made aware of it and learn the lessons and clear and clear what you're clear, what you've inherited from your parents and ancestors. So you can break that cycle. The law of karma is like gravity. As the Holy Bible puts it, the sins of the fathers carry to the 10th generation. So unfortunately, the sins of our ancestors carry all the way to this generation. And you are accountable for your sins, i.e. where you have missed the mark. The law of karma is like gravity. It doesn't care about your concept of fair or unfair. It is law, it is truth. And you are accountable and will be judged for your actions when the book of life or Akashic records are opened. So ultimately you, you will be accountable no matter how minor it may seem and no matter how ridiculous it seems. So your concept of fair or unfair doesn't matter when, when it comes to karmic law. So more and more scientists are now accepting the unit that the universe is a hologram. That is quantum physics, teaching there is a quantum realm which governs all things and overrides the material realm. So karmic law is actually backed by science. And consciousness precedes matter. In the holographic universe, Michael Talbot says that coffee cups, trees, table lamps might not exist in the way we believe them to be. So that means that whatever you've got in front of you does not truly ex exist. It only exists because you believe it to be. So this PowerPoint I'm using for this right now, this computer I'm using to do this webinar, it doesn't exist. It only exists because I believe it to. And this is why Christ and the yogis and all could do those great miracles. Like when Christ would change the water into wine, he no longer saw it as water. He saw it into wine. And when, and when he would walk on water, he would see it as solid instead of liquid. So truly when you get that, that's a big key to doing miracles. And your mind is like a radio transmitter, which tunes into the radio stations of infinite realms of energy. Our thoughts create our reality. Not only that, but the collective consciousness of those around us affects our reality and others. So unfortunately, the collective and the masses also create our consciousness and our reality if we're not mindful. So there's been so the scientific conclusions they've come to is that traditional physics is no longer relevant and that quantum physics is more real. All things are interconnected. We are one with all things. So we are not separate, but, it's, but we are all one whole. The third is linear space and time do not exist. I.e., time is not in a straight line, but we are in the now. Things and objects are not localized. They're spread as one big hologram. And nothing exists until observed. So, so once again, the first one, traditional physics no longer relevant, quantum physics more real, interconnectedness of all things. We are all connected with one another as people and also with all the other living things or beings. Space and time don't exist. Time is not linear. So things or objects aren't localized, i.e. are spread throughout the parts as one big hologram. It's all one whole. And things don't exist until they're observed. Only when we believe them to be there do they exist. We create our own life hologram. We create what's going on around us in our own reality. Even etheric medicine is now discovering this. So this one is where it can get very fascinating. Etheric medicine and karma. Because for centuries, the focus of Western medicine was healing the physical body. In recent years, however, etheric medicine, that is dealing with imprints, spears or wounds in the etheric body, has been recognized as a powerful way to heal beyond your physical body and heal it permanently. And because once upon a time in the Western world, medicine focused on healing the physical body. In recent times, however, we have seen a greater awareness on mental health, psychology and mind body science. So mental health and these and psychology and that area is now being, is, has finally been recognized. 
The wisdom of the shamans is now in the West, is what it's saying. So they, so different sources um, can have confirmed this, like Ken Wilbur and Albedo um, Valdado. And Ken, and Ken Wilbur in his book, Religion of Tomorrow, and Dr. Venus Williams, author of PhD thesis on how etheric tears, wounds, and past life imprints manifest in the physical body. And it predicts the next phase of religion will be the growth of etheric medicine. So Ken Wilbur predicts that it'll, the next phase of religion will be etheric medicine. Dr. Albedo Valdado, is an, he's an Amazon shaman. He makes similar predictions as well and is teaching the Western world the wisdom of the ancient medicine healers. Since the early 2000s, mental health and mind-body-spirit connection has become more recognized. So back then this was not recognized and it was seen as kind of, and it was seen as non-existent. So, and psychologists and mental health assistants became more widely accepted mainstream. Etheric medicine, meanwhile, has been developing quietly in the background and will become mainstream in the next 10 to 15 years. So mind, body and etheric, i.e. karmic imprints, all interrelate. So we've seen a rapid growth in the last 20 years of practitioners or healers who use machines, e.g. avatar, info, um, info pseudicals, which specialize in scanning the frequencies of the etheric body to see imprints of other or other blockages about to enter the physical world and be seen in your body. And Harold Hoxie in the 1930s was healing cancer using such devices. <clears throat> we are seeing an explosion of healers who know how to repair the etheric or auric body. However, there is still a relatively untapped area full of opportunity for those on the cutting edge. So truly, there's more and more healers available in this regard. So anything not cleared from the etheric manifests eventually into the physical. So manifesting physically. So what do I mean about anything unresolved or not dealt with etherically will manifest in the physical? Let me explain. If the imprint is not cleared from the etheric body by energetic healing, homeopathics or some other means, it will inevitably result in disease, illness, accident, injury, etc. <clears throat> and Louise Hay had a book called You Can Heal Your Life, and it gives a lot of insight into this area. So e.g. in her case, cancer was caused through lots of resentment, self-loathing and self-hatred. She gave a long list of illnesses and the metaphysics of how it all worked. So, so some examples on our website include, and what we'll do is we'll, I will quickly hop onto that site and show you briefly after this. Back issues represents the support of life. Cancer represents deep hurt, long-standing resentment, and carrying a deep secret or, or grief eating away at the self carrying hatreds so as it said with before when it comes to when it comes to cancer ultimately that's caused with self-hatred a lot of resentment lots of anger <clears throat> grief um the legs carry us forward in life about that's about moving forward um and an anxiety not trusting the flow and the process of life and fatigue resistance boredom lack of love for what one does and asthma so bill mccray has proved it's caused by a smothering mother and what he did was when when parents would come to him for um to heal their child of asthma what he would do is he'd say give me the mother for three months and the child will be fine and it worked every time so so the other ways is back pain neck pain eczema gallbladder or liver all these different ones so what what i'll do now is go on to louise hayes site and i'll, and I'll, I'll um, so this won't be long i'll just show you quickly 
So I'll just wait, share it back here. Okay, so can everyone see that? Just type Y in the text chat. Helen, yes. Christine, yes. Isaac, Sheldon, Sam. Yep, everyone can see it. Brilliant. So, so now we'll just go through. Dip. We'll go, so as you can see, there's a very long list here. So it has it has ones on things like acne, like acne and addictions, alcoholism, Alzheimer's. So like on Alzheimer's, it says here refusal to deal with the world as it is hopelessness and helplessness, anger, um, alcoholism, feeling of futility, guilt, inadequacy, self-rejection, acne, not accepting the self, dislike of the self, aches, longing for love, longing to be held, accidents, inability to speak up for the self, rebellion against authority, belief in violence, um, as you can see, there's a very long list of different stuff here. You can check it out if you want to in your own time. So um, breast represents mothering and nurturing and nourishment. Cysts and lumps are refusal to nourish the self, putting everyone else first, over mothering, over protection, over bearing attitudes. Breath represents the ability to take in life, breathing problems, fear, not trusting the process of life getting stuck in childhood, fear of taking life in fully. And Warren says her stuff is great, and I certainly agree with that. So there's, so I would certainly recommend to check this out with all these different, uh, these different lists. All right. So now we'll go back to the PowerPoint. So those are just different ones. Okay, now what I'm going to do actually with test, um, so we'll, we'll get some testimonials. So what, so what we'll be doing now is I'll actually be getting people on here live to share their testimonials who have done a lot of work with me. So, so we've got Steve Plummer, we've got Sam Buckley and Christine Evans. So, so which one of you wants to go first and take the mic? Steve, I'll go. Excellent, Steve. So I'll just unmute you quickly. Yeah, can you hear me well? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what I can say with working with you, it has been um, life-changing um, in many ways. You've helped me to look at and release parts of I guess my shadow self, my karma that I, I haven't been willing to or able to look at. Um, you know, you. I mean, it's it. It's kind of in six six months ago, it would have been difficult for me to actually even get on and express that. I mean, you're younger than most of my kids. Um, you know, so um, yet you have that ability to, um, you know, to scan to scan me or. Um, you know, my etheric field and, um, you know, and you'll often say things like, um, you know, you're, there's something on, on your chest, um, you know, wh what is it you need to say to get off your chest? And I'll kind of go, well, um, oh, nothing really. And then I'll, I'll sit with it for a bit and yeah, there'll be something there like, gee, I was pissed off about da, 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 da. And my, my life pattern has been not to speak that stuff out yet you're able to um, scan me and prod me and um, and lead me on that journey of releasing a lot of that um, that pent up energy which has been um, like I said remarkable um, you know it's, it's <laughs> and probably the really <laughs> the funny thing I think of is that um, because I have been so locked up in in a lot of my emotions and things is that um, even when it was when I didn't have the words or couldn't formulate the words of the stuff that that you were seeing, um, you were then able to help get it out energetically by um, vomiting it out and so forth. So um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I've I've heard you um, vomit out all of my um, blocked uh, blocked and locked up energy, um, and that has been a, a massive help 
in in assisting me on my journey to get on my path um, here in this lifetime. So um, yeah, no, thank you very much, Will, and um, uh, keep the vomiting going because it's not easy for me at my age to to, to look at the, the the parts of me um, that I don't really want to look at. And I think I think too, just a last final thing. Um, if it had have been six months ago, I probably would have felt really, really uncomfortable about saying things like that about myself that I don't really want people to see. Yet, you know, with your help, I've been able to unlock all of that, um, and I'm quite comfortable in sharing. Whereas before, I would have either not said anything, or I would have just put on a mask of, "Oh yeah, da da da,", da and it would have been a, a very surface level. Yeah, Will's really great to work with. Oh, he helps you kind of thing, rather than a. Um, you know, rather than me speaking from the heart and, and being vulnerable um, with that. And, and that's been a really difficult thing for me to do in my life. So, um, you know, so thank you. And I, I guess that's, that's sort of a summary of um, my journey and you helping me out with that journey. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. That was very good. And I, cer and I certainly, it's not been fun. It certainly has not been fun vomiting. <laughs> there's been a lot of shit we've had to get out, but ultimately I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. It's it's interesting too. You, um, despite what happens in a clearing session, you're you're ready to turn up the next day and and go through with it, whatever that brings. Um, you know, and I I actually. I guess sometimes, but it's only very rare that I know what's going to come up because you're able to, like I said, see things that, that I don't see within myself and, and things that I need to clear to help me to take that next step to open up more and to be more authentic and true to myself and true in my space. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries, Steve. That, that was really good. Thank you. And yes, it's been a great journey. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. And Chris, so Christine, so now you'll go. Yeah, I'm happy to talk to um, uh, William and, and it was really good to hear what Steve just had to say because I can confirm a lot of that. I have been on some sessions when Steve has, um, has been through that and um, it's been pretty much the same for me in sessions like that as well. So um, it's been... Um, uh, really quite amazing to think that you can scan people and um, bring up those things which are really deep and um, I appreciate it very much as well and um, I've actually been working with you I realize now for two years <laughs> and um, the first time I met you at your father's house did this massive clearing for me and I can remember crying my eyes out uh, as whatever it was came up. I can't even remember exactly what it was now. So that was a really good start. And it's two years on and I really feel those amazing clearings that you've done for me and my family too. I must um, say that you've helped my family a lot with different clearings and it's been really, really appreciated because some of them are really sick when, when you're doing those clearings and um, they recovered pretty much straight away. So that was most amazing. And the other thing I have done with you, I've learned, I've um, done some of your healing course sessions and that's been really, really helpful as well. So I have um, experience in that and, and the knowledge, which has been um, another part of my journey, I suppose I can say, um, adding to all the things that I've needed to know. So it's been really good and I can see that your, um, your power and your um, presentations and everything are um, increasing exponentially as the time goes on and things are speeding up. So I'm very grateful that you're around to give us assistance. <laughs> it's been really, really good and I look forward to working with you much more. Yeah, thank you, Christine. Yeah, I can't believe it's been two years already. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, thanks very much, William. Yeah, thank you, Christine. And just so you all know, Christine, so she's been working with us, as she just said, for two years now. And, and so she's been here from the beginning when I first started doing these webinars even. And she'll certainly remember um, the growth and all. 
So, yeah, I just wanted to add to that, William, really, the whole experience of these clearings and uh, learnings and everything's really changed my life. Yeah, I'll add that in as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. And now, last but not least, Sam Buckley. Hey, Will. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Will for, I think, around the six months mark, somewhere around there. I've done several of his courses now and had some one-on-one -on -one sessions with him as well. And yeah, my first experience with Will was the power I felt in his gift, even though he's on the other side of the country to me. And um, I have really, for me in my life, I've spent a lot of years um, just on that hamster wheel running, having a massive long to-do list and just never getting everything done and always stressing about what's not done or what needs to be done and I've really found with a lot of the clearings and stuff that Will's done for me um, it has definitely brought me to a place of peace a place of um, joy and, and relaxation really in every day like every day is a, a day of rest now and that that difference is just phenomenal in my life and all of the clearing and the, the karmic stuff that has now been lifted off my life has really just changed me in so many different areas. Um, I even sleep better at night time. Um, I'm have my own business and things have really changed there. Things have opened up quite a bit for me. And um, as some of you know, your children are a mirror image of you. And as I've been changing and growing through this whole process, I've seen the massive changes in my kids as well. So it's just been a really beautiful watching the changes that have happened in my life and my family. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate everything that Will has done and his gift and the fact that he's so committed to helping others shift in their life to, to reach where they need to be. So thank you for that, Will. Um, yeah, I look forward to, just as Christine does, I really look forward to working further with you in the future. And if there's anything that I can say about this stuff, if you're just getting started in here and this is maybe your first experience with any of this, is that just to trust the process, trust your intuition and really just um, set your intention to, and go with it and you'll really see a difference in your life. Actually, Will, there's one other thing I can add to, if you can still hear sure. me. Yeah, um, look, I've never met William face to face. It's all been done. All those clearings have been done, um, you know, over the interweb. Um, I'm a continent away from him, one side of the country to the other, like Sam. Um, and we've never actually met face to face yet. Um, yeah, he, <laughs> here he can vomit from the other side of the country <laughs> when I can't get rid of whatever I'm locked up about. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amusing, but also very empowering. So yeah, thanks, Will. Yeah, no problem, Steve. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sam. That was, thank you, Sam. That was really good. And, no worries. And yeah, I certainly agree about the children being a mirror. Yeah, definitely. And I look forward to working with you, Christine, everyone in the future. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Those are real. Those are really good. And I look forward to working with, with all of you in the future. All right, so now let's get to the next part. So clearing your karma. So how do I release karma? Why must I release my karma? What happens if I don't? It's simple. You keep repeating the same karmic loops until you resolve it. And it gets worse each time. It's best to deal with your karma in your current lifetime and get bring out all the pain. It's much worse in your next lifetime. Why? Well, it's because you're born without memory of the past life, so you have to unlock it. This isn't easy. It's why we must do karmic release work. It gets harder each time. Even worse is if you don't clear your karma at all. There are multiple energetic layers of soul dungeons where people go to work out their karma. You see this not only in the Holy Bible, but in other ancient texts and scrolls. It's not a nice place. It's far better to clear your karma. Again, there are two ways to release your karma. And just for clarification, the soul dungeons, you only really go in there when you, 
when you're deliberate or um, in your actions and when you've done real, real evil. So there are two ways to release your karma as we talked about previously. The first one you can list to work it out. You literally walk your, you have to walk your karma and everyone do, you, does to you as you did onto them. But the second one is you can clear it out and you do this by releasing your karma by listening and dealing with it, really bringing it to the table using codes and activations by masters, prophets, and psychics. This releases you from karmic consequences and enables you to avoid experiencing the full effects of your sin or karmic actions. So obviously this is the better way to go. It's far better to clear it out than work it out. So, so just think about like this, clear it out rather than work it out. It can take lifetimes to work it out. And what we do is we do a five step karmic release process. The first one is acknowledgement of universal laws. The second one is to learn the universal laws. The third one is to map out where you're out of alignment. The fourth one is to make it right. Fifth one is to put steps in place. So the first one is to acknowledge that there are higher laws to follow. It's not just about your own truth and what you want. It's, it's also about life, liberty and property and duty of care is the highest law. Second one is you learn the universal laws. You cannot obey what you don't learn. Ignorance is no excuse. So just because you're not, you don't know, it doesn't mean you won't reap the consequences. Think of it like an older, like the oldest versus the youngest child. So when they both do, when they both commit the same like bad thing or whatever to their parents, um, as you'd all as you'd all imagine, especially those with kids, the oldest one will get a harsher punishment because they're the ones who should know better, and the younger one just as needs to be more educated. So it's kind of like that. So although although you won't experience it as badly as someone who knows this, you will still experience it pretty badly. And the third one is to map out where you're out of alignment. So go through and list out where you've sinned or out of alignment with your life. Really unlock it and bring it onto the table. The fourth one is to make it right. Take practical action steps to fix it. Be led by the masters and what needs to be done. Do clearings and shifts. So make it right with how you're led and what, what you actually feel to do. Fifth one is to put steps in place. So distinguish remorse and repentance in and repentance because there's a there's a major difference. So true repentance is um must be preceded by follow through, i.e. steps to fix the problem. So you're made aware of it, you feel all the emotions, but then you you must take steps to actually fix it. Otherwise, it is only remorse, i.e. feeling emotional. So you're, you feel bad, but you do nothing about it to actually solve the issue at hand. And what we have here is a karmic checklist. This is our karmic checklist. So these are different fits and samples of what you may have experienced now. So people you owe money to and haven't paid them back, people you ripped off in business or money, so e.g. friends, clients, or family members, promises to yourself you haven't kept, e.g. a diet you promised to do, goals or resolutions you made for yourself, unfulfilled or broken vows. So like marriage vows, promises to others, e.g. soulmates forever, vows to help someone fi financially, religious or spiritual orders or secret societies, what vows you've made to them and what oaths. And then and pacts, i.e. formal agreements to ruin or undermine somebody in business family members against each other, um, pay, wasteful um, extravagance with money on self-pleasure, pr proving you can't be trusted to manage money wisely, practicing dark arts, so like dark witchcraft and sorcery, putting curses or hexes on people, imagining hateful dark thoughts against another for their ruin and meaning it and causing an impact, Ex oppressing, extorting or bullying others, tithing or humanitarian giving, we are called to give beyond ourselves to a higher purpose. We are supposed to do that. Failing to tithe or otherwise give beyond ourselves brings in a curse upon us. Speaking your truth. 
So not speaking your truth consistently and keeping it locked up. Deliberately lying or telling falsehood for your own selfish ends. Not allowing others to speak their truth. Being in a blame cycle with others for your struggles, having a victim or complaining mentality. So playing the victim and playing the struggle bunny role. Going off path and making money your primary pursuit rather than doing what your sole agreement or life mission is on the planet. <coughs> so making money your God. Make misuse of sexual energy, e.g. manipulating someone sexually for your own ends, withholding sexual energy from a partner, not being fully truthful with what you want, and anything else which jumps out at you. So just type in the text chat if um, which ones jumped out at you on that one, on those ones. Max, almost all of them lol. Oh, geez, Max, you certainly had the experiences then. Helen, several. Yeah, it's it's quite scary, isn't it? There's there's a lot of karmic stuff that we've done without realizing. Beebs, a few of the above. Yeah, and I've certainly done a few of these too. So B, lots. Sheldon being in a blame cycle and many others. James, several. Steve, there's a few there that look familiar. Max, going off path and making money my primary pursuit really resonates. Yeah, these are certainly familiar, Steve. And unfortunately, a lot of people make money their primary pursuit, Max. Sam, multiple. Christine, quite a few. Um, Lexi, I've done work around a lot, but still some. Yeah, quite, when you think about it, it's pretty frightening how much we've actually done without even knowing. So yeah, pretty much everyone here has had quite a few of the, um, of these and I'm, and I'm no exception either. Lexi, yeah, I was, I was just thinking that lol. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so and they and karma is normally stored, it they'll be stored in your chakras as well. And each one represents something different. So root chakra, that's around survival, basic trust, sacral, that's sexuality, creativity, solar plexus is your wisdom and power and self-power. Heart chakra is love and healing, throat chakra, it's communication, third eye is your awareness, your vision. Crowd chakra is that spiritual connection to the cosmic energy and the masters of the universe. Okay, so what we're going to do now is a free clearing, but just before we get into it, um, this is this is good. This is a special treat because we have a new code which is hot off the press, which is called the convergence of the moksha supreme self code. Moksha means release from the cycle of rebirth, impelled by the law of karma. The transcendent state attained as a result of being released from the cycle of rebirth. Okay, so does anyone have any questions before we do the Moksha clearing code, before you do the clearing? Christine, no. And Sam, no. Sheldon, no. Babes, will it hurt? Um, there is, yeah, there is that chance, babes, but that's because it's the, that's because it's the blockage or whatever it is coming up. So, and it needs to just be shifted. Grace says, wow, well, love this code. Yeah, I agree, Grace. Max, Moksha, the ultimate state in Tantra. Yes. Sam, code is phenomenal. Lexi, it's popping. Yeah, I agree. This is a this is a great code. And Steve agrees too. B, can I see Chakra Pick for another minute? Yeah, sure. Christine, love the code. 
All right, there you go. Yeah, everyone certainly loves that code and I do too. So there you go, B, here's the chakras. You can even screenshot it if you want. Yep. All right. So now, now what we'll do is get into the clearing. So what I'll be, what I'll do now is I'll just switch off my camera while we're doing this clearing, and then I'll turn it back on when we when we get to the next stage. So now everyone focus on this boxer code, and inhale it to your third eye. Just imagine it there, and then close your eyes. allowing yourself to get into a deeper brain state. So you'll take deep breaths. What we'll do is inhale through the nose for four. For four counts and then hold it for four counts. And exhale through the mouth for eight. Breathe in through the nose for four counts. Hold for four counts and breathe out through the mouth for eight. Just keep breathing and imagining this code. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this higher moxa code be used to clear the, the, the karma, the wheel of incarnation cycle from each person here, clearing out past, clearing out all past life karma, anything related to that karmic check, checklist around pursuing money, making it their God, not speaking their truth, misusing sexual energy, <clears throat> being stuck in a job or business they hate. Where they've, and where, where they have, where they may have swindled in past lives or this lives and mistreated people. Clearing the past life karma around it and clear any current karma and, and, and also karma inherited from parents and ancestors. <sighs> clear it, so we clear out all the um, clear out all try all the traces of karma from all seven chakras, from the first chakra, from the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, and the morphogenetic chakras in the auric field. Clearing out and shifting all karmic imprints from each person here permanently. Now, to Asia in today.
<clears throat> shifting it from all shockers, all dimensions, all layers, all lifetimes, closing up all the portals and open that's open to other people, places, times, things, and events, to other dimensions, other astrals, other beings. <coughs> so spinning the wheels of this moksha code to spinning it to spin out all the karma, spin out all the karmic imprints, shift that twisted knots of energy, bring back, clear out the eds, bring back gold and soul fragments. Helping each person here to make the karma right. Connecting them, connecting them to source, to the higher laws, to their own truth, to karmic truth, to the all levels of it.
So just keep feeling it, everyone. Keep feeling it. Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that? Max, amazing energy. Thank you, William. Helen, third eye pulsing. Awesome. Yeah, it is amazing energy, Max. James a bit trained and calm. Yeah, that certainly certainly can be heavy. And Warren, brilliant code this. Yeah, I agree. I really felt this code. And um, Babes, great. I felt a lot of heaviness in my chest. That's great. That's cleared out now. Sheldon, better now. Sleepy, burping. <laughs> awesome, Sheldon. Sam, sleepy, lol. <laughs> Max, tons of release. Can breathe easy. Can breathe easier. That's awesome, Max. <clears throat> Sheldon, heaviness in my chest too. Sam, this is the first choice I've seen with words in it. Yeah, I know. Same here. <clears throat> Christine saw rays of golden light radiating in the cosmos. Lots of pressure in my head for a while. Gone now. Excellent, Christine. That's really good. Simon, shivers and burping. Tired now. Yeah, there certainly was a lot happening there. B, head a bit light. Calm feeling. 
Yeah, awesome, B. And Sam, code not choice. Oh, okay, Sam. Um, babes feeling better. I also found it hard to breathe at one point. Yeah, there certainly was a lot shifting there. Lexi, eyes were watering a lot. Lot felt lots of quick release followed by restoration. That's awesome, Lexi. That's really great. Sheldon, ears were plugging up. James, excellent code, what I believe. <clears throat> yes, it is. It is an excellent code. All right, so now what we'll do is just take a sip of water to integrate that. Yep, and Warren says project the code into your water. Yeah, absolutely. That'll certainly do it. <clears throat> yes, there's certainly many wheels, Warren. That's why I use them in the clearing. Yes, the wheel upon wheel of incarnations being cleared out, spinning it all out. Okay, so is there any questions before we move on to the next step? Sheldon, no. Sam, no. It's Christine, no. Jackie, no, just thank you. Awesome. B, no. Helen, no. Thank you, that was very interesting. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> James, no, but thanks William, brilliant. Again, thanks. Yep, yeah, no worries. Thank you, James. Helen, thank you very much. Babes, how often would you recommend a clearing session? So, um, oh, every day, babes, you want to be clearing yourself every day, especially living on this planet and everything you can pick up and all. So you certainly want to be clearing yourself every day. Okay, so no final questions. Awesome. So now we'll get to the next stage. So what's next? <clears throat> so experience a full karmic clearing and miracles in your life. So it's an, a live eight class transformation. Um, attract more finances, regain your sense of belonging, step onto your life path, a more peaceful state of mind and much, much more. So an all for as little as $97 US per week. So keep watching for more details. This is what you'll get. An eight, you'll get eight live 90 minute karmic clearing life transforming classes and unlimited access to the recordings of each session. So what benefits does it give? It'll help you if you're ready 
to learn the law of karma so ignorance doesn't smash you. Clear karmic imprints in your energy field, which are affecting you in all areas of your life right now. Clear blockages, negative energy, curses, hexes, and spells around business, investments, and money, which open you to the dark, especially to governments and authority. Clear karmic patterning around the 12 karmic archetypes. Stop self-sabotage. Clear karmic blockages around health. Um, uh, clear karmic blocks keeping you unaligned with your purpose. Map out a systematic plan to address your karma, not only spiritually, but also physically. Help you integrate all of your past lives and, rec and reclaim your full soul, your, your true soul. So what's been covered in the first class, that'll be an introduction to karmic clearing, the laws of karma in the universe and how they apply, why you reap what you sow. The second class and the third classes will be science behind karmic clearing, how the Akashic records work to record your past lives, how karma and ancestral blocks affect you, dealing with karmic blocks, your esoteric foundation of enhanced karmic release. The four classes four to six will be a karmic release using the karmic checklist on money, health and relationship issues. We focus on clearing karma, attracting financial and business problems, scam investments, lawsuits, government actions, high taxes, lockdowns, toxic relationships, health issues and other issues affecting you living your purpose. And in the seventh and eighth classes, that'll be karmic patterning and clearing the 12 karmic archetypes each of us carry over from lifetimes, i.e. the rescuer, the emotional cannibal, etc. So different ones like that. So when will it start? It'll start on the 1st of December. The time, it'll start at um, the, um, 1 o'clock for Western Australian Standard Time, so 4 p.m. Eastern Standard and for US, that would be 12 a.m. in New York. And number of places 12. So who this is not for. This is not for you if you're a skeptic and don't believe in karma full stop. You're not ready yet. You're not committed nor an action taker. And who this, who this is for. You love this stuff, are ready to ascend and get out of the wheel of incarnation and leave this planet. You're fed up with money, health problems, self-sabotage, and are looking for an alternative solution. You're an action taker and you're keen to evolve. You're already successful, but are keen to invest and evolve to the next level. Um, all the past and current lifetime imprints in your etheric body will manifest into your physical reality. So this is what will happen to you if you don't clear your karma and get this sorted quick smart. Um, this includes illnesses, diseases, injuries, etc., financial hardship, so like bad investments, jobs you hate, scammers, etc. You'll attract the wrong people in your life and toxic people. Life will feel meaningless and you'll be miserable. Your connection to the divine will be limited and blocked. You'll repeat the same patterns your ancestors did and won't learn from them and since you carry your karma, their karma also. Ascension will not be possible. You can forget it. Um, you'll have to reincarnate in the wheel of incarnation over and over again. So this is the kind of stuff that happens to you if you don't get your karma sorted quick, smart. And with the COVID, with, with the looting, the rioting, and the planet pretty much exploding right now, and all the stuff happening, this, you, this is more important than ever that you get your karma cleared so you don't get caught up in the lockdowns, the microchipping, the COVID vaccinations, and all of, all of those horrible stuff that you do not want. So once again, the Karmic Clearing Program is eight online webinars over, um, over eight weeks. You also have access to the recordings in your own unique member login. Plus, there will be a bonus ninth integration webinar with myself so you can integrate it. So, um, so, once, so I'll, I'll once again emphasize the five step enhanced karmic release process. The first one is acknowledgement of universal laws, acknowledge, um, acknowledge that there are higher laws to follow. It's not just about your own truth, life, liberty, and property of duty of care is the highest law. So the second one is the learning the universal laws. Ignorance is no excuse. You cannot obey what you don't know. The 
The third one is map out where you're out of alignment. Go through and list out where you've sinned or out of alignment with your own life. Fourth is make it right. Take practical action steps to fix it. Be led by the masters and what needs to be done. Do the clearings and shifts. And then the last one, put steps in place. Distinguish remorse and repentance. Repentance must be preceded by follow through, i.e. steps to fix the problem. Otherwise, it's only remorse, feeling emotional, and there's no point. So this is the usual investment you'd expect to pay for something like this. Almost, so pretty much 5,000 US. So that's the equivalent of what Warren paid. I should have um, changed that. Um, so today's investment, it's only, um, it's only 1,067 in 11 weekly installments of $97, or if you pay up front, it's 888. So this is your risk-free guarantee. If after 48 hours, you change your mind, you can actually withdraw. After that, there are absolutely no refunds whatsoever. So this is your risk-free guarantee. And so if you commit, if you commit today, so this is, so I'll emphasize, this is only if you commit today and what, so you can, you'll be able to pick a recorded choice we previously done of your choosing, of your choosing. You can shift much faster to make it easier through these times. You will get a personalized one-on-one -on -one session with myself to help clear specific issues where you need help. That'll be after the course. So, um, so, so what I'll do is I'll show you the courses that we've done. So there's Auric Clearing, there's J Seals Clearing, there's Soul Groups, Ultimate Clans, Dark Masters, Spirit Guides, Curses, Hexes and Spells, and Awakening Your Innate Manifestation. And what I'll do is I'll show you it quickly. I'll just get on the link now. So I'll, I'll, I'll change my, I'll switch my screen in a sec when this is put up. All right, so I'll switch my screen quickly. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Just type in the text chat if you can. Yep, Helen, yes. Okay, so Helen can see it. Can I, can anyone else see it? Just making sure. Hang on, the what? Well, one of the team members just said it's the wrong link, so I'll quickly fix that. Yep. So, so now here we. Okay, here we go. Okay, so yep, this is the right link, and this is how you would do it. You will pay, so you can, you will just fill out this form, your last, fill out your first, last name, all that, phone number, card number, all that. And you've got your two options here. You've got your one-time payment of 888 USD up front or 11 weekly payments of 97 US for a total of 1,067. So that all you have to do is fill that out and click submit and then you'll be all sorted. Okay, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint now. So yep, once so so once again, if you sign, if you commit once again, if you choose to commit today, you can pick a recorded course we've previously done of your choosing. You can shift a lot faster to make it easier through these times. You'll get a personalized one-on-one -on -one session with myself to help clear specific issues where you need help. And these are the choices you have.
So this is the payment link. And for any questions or inquiries, you, you can email me here, william at theawakeningwithin.net. So, so now just type Y in the text chat if, this, if you're interested. Helen, yes. And Babes, yes. So once again, I'll open the link. Hold on, I've got to reshare my screen. Yep, there we go. So, yep. So, Christine is a yes, and Steve as well. So, Christine and Steve, yep. And what I'll do, what I'll do now is I'll put the link in the chat. So once again, all you all you have to do is click this, and then fill it all out here, and you'll be good to go. You can choose a, a payment plan or upfront. So can everyone see that link in the chat? And once and once again, this is this is much more important. It's more important than ever that you get your karma cleared, especially with these lockdowns, with these forced masks. And Qantas just recently they made that it mandatory for you to fly with them. And being and ultimately trusting in the system is no longer going to be working like it used to anymore. And you and you will certainly. Um, reap the full repercussions of what is happening in light of what is happening. So Helen and Sheldon can see it. Awesome. And my question to you guys is what's stopping you from committing today? And once and once again with the one on one session, if you commit today, what will happen is it is you will is it I'll clear I will be clearing specific issues where you need help in. So the way it, it will work is after the course you'll you will receive a link and then on the call what will what I will do is ask you what you want what what is it that you want cleared from your life and it can be anything and then. Then what we would do is we would get it, get the information. Then what I would do is use a code, um, uh, use a code, more recent code like the mock shot, and then clear whatever it is you need cleared. And, and with the money and with the money, um, we absolutely understand if you don't have the money, because we understand how, how strong, how much of a struggle that can be and all the different commitments. 
So, 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 so if that's the case, then I then I thank you for coming to this webinar, and I hope you really enjoyed it. But unfortunate, but unfortunately, if you don't clear your karma, then you will you will truly reap what you've sown, and especially and especially with what's going on on the planet, it'll be ten times worse, much worse than ever, with all these lockdown, and you won't. And unfortunately, you won't have any money in future. Especially with these governments, the new world order, the new world order, and with um, economic meltdowns, a reset, everything like this. And what we will do is give you our best to really clear the set imprints in you and, re and really do our best to clear it out. And and then in the one on one session, what we'll be doing is clear as much as possible from you. And because it will be more personalized, that will, that's the what will make it all the better. It'll be all about you and clearing what you want to clear out. But remember it only if you only if you commit today. Um, so, so Hel well, Helen, this, what I was going to say um, applies to that. Will you do another course later? Well, because the, the other option you can always do is a recorded course. So, so perhaps I will. So I might, but that's not a guarantee. But what you can always do is the other option is that you can do a recorded course. You can do a recorded one, but this won't include the new code, the mock shop. It will be a, co a course we've done previously. All right, so is there any final questions before we end the webinar? Steve, thanks, William. That was great. Looking forward to it. Awesome, Steve. Warren, brilliant, William. Sheldon, thanks, William. Sam, thanks. Yep, no worries, everyone. Thank you. I thank you for taking the time and the commitment to come to this free webinar. And I trust that you got a lot out of it, a lot of value, a lot of lessons out of it and the clearing. And, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. And I'll see you all. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.